orthopedic medicine stating risks of surgery bleeding disorders blood clots after surgery blood clots could cause stroke trouble breathing after surgery anesthesia complication post-operative infections we mentioned 30 days after total knee replacement there's a chance of death one out of 400 people die after total knee replacement surgery this is a statistics not to mention you did surgery not to take medications for the rest of your life now you may have to take more pain medications and muscle relaxants because they cut the muscles they cut the skin you have a big scar tissue on your knee after the surgery I mean just anesthesia by itself after anesthesia there is an increased risk of neurological or psychiatric conditions delirium Alzheimer dementia you can get early dementia early Alzheimer there is a diagnosis code for post-operative cognitive dysfunction due to anesthesia do you really want to deal with that so there is alternative now surgery may be needed for some cases surgery may be needed we refer patients for surgery our orthopedic trained doctors refer patients for surgery the problem is that we all know when surgery is needed but most doctors who our surgeons do not know when surgery is not needed. They should, the patient should do something else prior to this. That is why Medicare is approving the following care that I tell you that is non-surgical, non-steroidal, non-anesthesia. No months of rehab is needed. There is no downtime needed after this care as a must as part of conservative care for a patient has to go through it before they could be a candidate for surgery I will go over what you should do I will go over what you shouldn't do there are a lot of common mistakes among patients and doctors the first is a standing x-rays the reason I say standing is most patients who have had knee pain, they come to us, they don't have x-rays. A lot of patients that have had knee pain for a long time, they come to us with an x-ray that was supine or prone. They were laying down on a flatbed, x-ray was done. But the problem is that with that is you have pain when you're standing. You don't have pain when you're laying down in your bed. You have pain when you're sitting on a couch and want to get up to be standing. Therefore, the x-ray needs to be standing. That's why we do standing x-rays to see what is the position of your actual knee joint when you're standing. Is it the medial side that has a problem? Is it the lateral side that has a problem? Is it the front of the knee that has a problem? Is it the back of the knee that has a problem? So standing x-rays are essential next common mistake that we see in our office is most patients who have had injections they have had injections without imaging guidance what it means imaging guidance it helps the physician when they inject the person's knee to see at the point of entry what's going on in the knee joint because we don't like to guess we want to see we want to localize the point of entry to your joint to see where the medication goes the problem is we see a lot of surgeons who are expert in their field and this is kind of something very basic for them to provide an injection versus cut you and give you a surgery they do a blindfold without imaging guidance and without imaging guidance if an injection is done 
the medication may miss the area that it's supposed to go because don't forget, these injections that we're talking about are commonly known as gel shots. These gels they have to be in a specific area of your knee to stay there. They are similar to the uh, fillers that mostly ladies, they put in their face, they are gel. And the reason they're gel because wherever the physician puts them, they stay there. We're gonna talk about that a little later.